Hello lovely people, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe. In this video I will be reviewing these yarns from Hobby and at the same time I'll be showing you how to crochet a golden retriever. The lovely people of Hobby contacted me and asked me if I wanted to review some of their yarns and I am so excited to do this. I'm always looking for new brands to try to see if the yarn works better than the ones I already know. And of course I had to try some of their cotton yarn because cotton is just my favorite material to work with when it comes to amigurumi. And also I found something else which will be a very interesting experiment. And so I can't wait to get started and try these yarns. But before, let me tell you a bit more about them and about Hobby. Hobby is a Copenhagen-based company selling yarn to all the yarn lovers around the world. They have all you need for your next crocheting or knitting project and all products are designed and shipped from their warehouse in Denmark. The cotton yarn I'll be reviewing is made in India. It's always really important for me to know where the materials I use come from. And I'm happy that it has the Ecotex Standard 100 label on it, which means that no harmful substances were used in the production of this yarn. I really want to switch to organic cotton yarn in future, and I'm really pleased that Hobby does offer organic cotton yarn. When I was looking at it to select colors though, there wasn't much choice, so I couldn't do the project I wanted to do in the organic cotton, so that's something that I'd love to see improve. I'm really excited about incorporating this in our project. When I was scrolling the hobby website to see which project I'm going to use their yarns for, um, this is the one I saw and then I knew exactly what to do because um, a couple of you lovely people have suggested um, that I create a pattern for a golden red river and when I saw this yarn I thought that's it. <laughs> I just love the different shades of yellow and this yarn comes in different colors so there are 22 different um, colors and they're all have different shades or many even different colors which makes for a really beautiful effect and so I recommend you go and check them out and um, this one because it's really natural it's just perfect for the golden red river fur I think and there is not just the Diablo wild print they also offer just Diablo, Diablo Glitter, Diablo Multi and Diablo Print. So there's a nice range of these yarns. The material for this one is 30% mohair, 30% nylon and 40% acrylic. And that really makes it nice and affordable. So it's £5.50 and you can check out, click, click the link in the description to see how much it is in your currency. The next yarn I'm going to review is from their Rainbow Range and this is the 4-ply yarn. So for this I think I'm going to use the 25 millimeter hook like I do most of the time because although it is 4-ply it's quite similar to the DK one I'm used to in terms of thickness. And the hook size that's recommended is 3 to 3.5 millimeters. And that's just perfect because as you know for amigurumi we tend to use smaller hooks than recommended. Just to make sure that we don't have large gaps through which the fiber fill can show through. I'm really happy with how the Rainbow 6-8 quality worked out for my Golden Red River. In combination with the Diablo Wild Print yarn. And so... I also want to try the Rainbow 8, 8 quality, which is the DK weight. And this color just screams little chick to me. <laughs> and so, since Easter is around the corner, I thought I'd make a little chick 
to test it. So here's my little chick. It really was a joy crocheting with this yarn. I mean, that's my favorite. Um, although the four ply one was great as well. The yarn rarely split. It's so nice and soft and it's just a joy to work with. So I'll definitely be making more projects with this yarn. Thank you very much, Hobby, for sending me your rainbow 8-8 quality yarn. Love it. And yeah, the only thing to keep in mind is that it is a bit thicker than other DK yarns. I have worked with many DK or light worsted weight cotton yarns. So um, yeah, I really noticed that. But as long as you keep that in mind, all is good and I would definitely recommend using it for your amigurumi projects and if you want something smaller then the four ply yarn the 6-8 quality is fantastic as well. Before we get into the other materials you'll need for this project I'd like to tell you about the free patterns that are available on the hobby website for everyone. So there are lots of beautiful free patterns to choose from. They also have a subscription called Hobby Plus, which costs £6.99 per month. So you can click on the link to check out how much that is in your currency. And it also comes with benefits such as three free plus patterns per month. And you get double the points on each order because Hobby has a point system. So you collect points with each order and once you collected a certain amount you can spend them in the point store so you can select tools and all kinds of things from the point store once you have collected enough and then the other benefits of hobby plus are that you get 10 percent of all regular priced items a weekly scratch card, extra candy with your order, and much more. So let's get started with this project. First, I'll be trying the rainbow four ply yarn. So if you want to go for the same yarn, you can find the link in the description box below. If you instead want to use yarn from your stash, then you might want to use um, DK yarn, although you can also go for four ply, but just so you know, like I mentioned, this is another yarn that I often use. And this one is DK, but this one is four ply and the thickness is very similar. So. You can use this one in combination with a 2.5 millimeter hook which is something in between a size B1 and C2 and as always I think the C2 will be fine for most of you but if you tend to crochet quite loosely I recommend going for a B1. Then for the fluffy golden red river yarn like I mentioned I'll be using this Diablo wild print yarn. So if you want to use the same, again, you can find the link in the description box below. And if you want to use yarn from your stash or for any other brand, look for a mohair blend that is one ply. And by the way, you can also use this pattern to make a Labrador in any color you like. And for that, I would just stick to the cotton yarn so that would make a very cute project as well and then you won't be needing this more hair blend yarn. We also need some fiber fill and black embroidery floss to embroider the nose and mouth and for that we also need a large eyed sewing needle. The eye should obviously be large enough for the embroidery floss and we want a nice pointy tip to get through the fibers and for sewing we need a yarn needle and I love the ones with, be with bent tips, they make it so easy. In terms of safety eyes, I'll be using 5mm safety eyes, at least in combination with the rainbow 4-ply yarn. But um, when I try out 
the rainbow decay yarn I might use actually larger ones maybe six millimeters and then we need a stitch marker and scissors and the small pliers are optional if you have them already great if not don't worry about it I just use them sometimes for the embroidery part in case the needle gets stuck I use it to pull out the needle so it's very handy but not a must so without further ado let's get crocheting this is future Stella coming in to tell you that you also need an old toothbrush if you're making the golden retriever with the more hair blend yarn. So you'll definitely need something to brush your dog, otherwise it will be very messy. And also if you want to give it a little tongue, you may need a light pink embroidery floss and a very small hook. I'm using a 1.75 millimeter. But if you don't have this, don't worry, you can also use the hook size we're already using for the whole project and some DK or 4 ply light pink yarn. Um, you can also use that for the tongue. So if you don't want to add a tongue, don't worry, I'll show you both versions. So I've experimented a bit. And I'm now using the Rainbow 86 quality, so that's the four ply. And I divided the Diablo Wild print into two skeins so that I can take two strands of the Diablo Wild print and one strand of the Rainbow 86 quality. And that's what I'm working with here. And of course, you don't have to use the Diablo wild print or any other mohair blend if you want to just crochet a non-fluffy dog. <laughs> so feel free to just use a four ply yarn um, or a decay yarn and crochet along with me. And I'm using the 2.5 millimeter uh, which is a um, size C2 hook and it's almost too small for this um, thickness that I'm now working with but it still works just um, if it's too small for you you can just go for a slightly larger hook um, if necessary so we start with the legs with the paws and then the legs and we start with a magic ring just leave a longish yarn end we will use this later to um, shape the paws and so if you leave maybe 12 centimeters so um, maybe around five inches four or five inches that's enough and just use your preferred magic ring method so now we start with eight single crochet in the magic ring so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and we close the magic ring i don't close it fully just yet i leave a small gap here because now we want to move the yarn ends through to the other side because that's where we need them to shape the paws in just a bit so that's round one done And so next we work in the back loops only. And so we start with two single crochet. So I'm just going in the back loop here of the next stitch. Single crochet and a single crochet in the next back loop. Single 
So now we make a back loop decrease <laughs> and so we go in the next back loop and then in the next back loop and to do that I find it easiest to get my hook in there in between the front and back loop of the next stitch and then I just turn my hook 180 degrees and this way you have the second back loop on your hook and then now we pick up the yarn and pull it through the two back loops one and two and pick up the yarn and put it through the two remaining loops. And now we repeat these steps, two single crochet in the back loops and the back loop decrease. And by the way, so far this is working up really nicely. So the yarn doesn't seem to split. It split a bit at one point, but I believe that was due to me using several um, yarns held together. So I'm really happy with that. I'll also test it on its own just so I can tell you what I think about that. And so we repeat everything. Single crochet in the next back loop. Single crochet in the next back loop. And A back loop decrease so insert your hook in the next back loop and then in the second back loop by getting your hook in between the front and back loop of the next stitch and then just turning it 180 degrees pick up the yarn pull it through the two back loops pick up the yarn and pull it through the two remaining loops so that's round two done. Now we can close the magic ring a little tighter. And in the next two rounds, we simply single crochet in all six stitches in both front and back loop as we normally do this time. So you can pause the video here and hit play once you've done the next two rounds of six single crochet. My two rounds of six single crochet are now done. And so in round five, we increase a little bit. We single crochet in the next two. One, and two. And then in the next stitch, we increase. So two single crochet in the next stitch and now we repeat all this. I just wish I had a yarn ball, especially when working with <laughs> three different skeins. So that's something I put on my wish list. <laughs> so now we single crochet two again, one and two and then two single crochet in the next stitch. So that's round five done. Now in round six, we decrease again. So we have now eight stitches and re reduce them to six. So we single crochet two, one, and two and then we decrease this time we do an invisible decrease it's just the regular one in the front loops and so we go in the front loop of the next stitch there we go and then pull our hook down to go in the next front loop and then we pick up the yarn and pull it through the two front loops and pick up the yarn and pull it through the remaining two front loops and we repeat all these steps. So two single crochet, one 
and two, and then two front loops. So, invisible decrease, I mean. <laughs> so, two front loops together. So, we go in the next front loop and in the next one, pick up the yarn, put it through the front loops and pick up the yarn and put it through the two remaining loops. So now we're back to a stitch count of six and in the next round we single crochet in all six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so for the four legs, that's all we do. So if this is the first leg you're making and you're making a four leg, now you can just finish by making a slip stitch in the next stitch. Just slip it through and now you can fasten off. We don't need a particularly long yarn and so this much will be enough. Again, four or five inches, um, 10, 12 centimeters should be enough. And then you do two of these four legs. So in the description box below, you can find all the timestamps so that you can go back to the beginning of the tutorial for the legs. So once you have two four legs, then you repeat all of this again, but we continue with one extra round for the hind legs. So for the hind legs, you don't do the slip stitch in the end. We add one additional round in which we slightly increase. So we start with two single crochet, one and two. Then we increase, so two single crochet in the next stitch. And we repeat all of this again. So two single crochet, and two single crochet in the last stitch. So an increase in the last stitch. And that's the hind legs done. So now we finish with a slip stitch. Slip stitch in the next stitch. And here again, we don't need a very long yarn and this is enough. Pull everything through. And so once you have two fore legs and two hind legs, we can shape the paws. And for this, we need our yarn needle. And so we thread all of these yarn ends on the yarn needle. If necessary, you can cut a bit off so that you have a smooth end that goes in there. And that's it. So now where we have the back um, or where, where the yarn end comes out, that's the back of the paw. So now we go in the center of the magic ring and exactly in the opposite side. So the opposite side of where the yarn end comes out, that's our starting point. And we go back in the center of the magic ring and this time slightly toward the left 
like so. Last time we came out here, now we come out there. And now make a nice tight stitch. And we go in the same spot, center of the magic ring again. And now we come out slightly toward the right. So pull nice and tight again. And now we go in here again and just stitch through somewhere where we can weave in the yarn end. Pull that one nice and tight. And so you can see we made three stitches. And from the top, it looks like this. You can't really see the stitches very well, but mainly the point is that it flattens the paw just so that it looks more paw-like. <laughs> and so now we just weave in the yarn it with a few stitches. One. Two. And then we can come out here through the top three. So that's it. And you can repeat this with all four legs and then we can go ahead and crochet the belly. So now that the little legs are done, we can cut off the yarn ends that we've woven in just to make it less confusing with all these yarn ends. And then we can go ahead and start crocheting the belly because soon after we will start attaching the legs because we will crochet them on as I usually do in my patterns. So we just move them to the side. We'll be using them soon. But first we start with the belly. And so I'm, again, I'm using all three yarn strands. Oh, here you can see how beautifully the shades change <laughs> every every two inches or so. Just love this yarn. So we start with seven chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we single crochet two in the second chain counted from our hook so in here we single crochet two then we single crochet in the next four chains so that's one two three and four then we single crochet four in the next chain in the last one here so one two and as we do we turn our work so the next two are going in from the other side that's three and four. And now we single crochet in the other side of the chain. So in the next four. So it's just exactly on the opposite side of the existing single crochet. So you can see that the first one goes in here. One. The next one in here, two, three, and four. And then in the other side of the next chain, we single crochet four. So that we have a round of 16 stitches now. And in the last one, I place my stitch marker. <laughs> so 
so later you may be adding some fluffy five extra fibers to the belly but we'll get to that part later and so in the next round we already start attaching the legs and so the first leg we need is a hind leg so just have one of those ready we start with one single crochet in our belly piece here and then we attach the leg and so if you imagine this is the belly the stitch marker and where we are now is the back this here is the front and so the hind leg needs to be attached here this way with the paw facing forward and so we attach it somewhere on the inside of the leg which is this side so this is a bit trial and error if you've been um, following my tutorials you know how it goes so I just try and see how it looks. I start with this stitch here that's on the inside of the leg but a little further toward the back. Just see how it goes if the paw faces in the right direction and then we just single crochet eight. So one in each stitch of the leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and so in we make one single crochet in the next stitch so that would be this one here and then we can see how it worked out if the paw is facing in the right direction and I think it is it's facing forward slightly outward which I think is cute so I'll keep going with that so you can see where we made the center stitch, that's where it's facing. Yeah, I think I'm going with that. <laughs> so we have now made one single crochet in the belly. And we make five more single crochets, so six all together. That's one, two, So what can happen with all these, when using all these yarns is that you get stuck somewhere, <laughs> but so far it's working really nicely actually. So that's two, three, four, five and six and now it's time to attach the first foreleg and so we take one of our forelegs and obviously we also want that to point forward and so we join the yarn quite at the back of the leg and just see how that looks so I'm joining exactly in this slip stitch that we made so in the slip stitch that's where I start let's see how that goes so we single crochet six one in each stitch of the foreleg so that's two three, four, 
five, six, and now we single crochet in the next two stitches of the belly here. One. Um, that's looking good. Seems to be facing forward. Let's see if I can twist it a bit more. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. So that was one and then two. And so now we're on the other side and we can already attach the second foreleg. And now the front is obviously facing to my right and so Again, we join at the back. So I think this time, well, should I join again in this slip stitch? I, I'll try that. So let's see how it goes. Or the first one. No, maybe the slip stitch should be the last one. Yeah, I'm joining in the stitch to the right of the slip stitch and again we single crochet one in each stitch of the foreleg one two three Four, five, and six. So the slip stitch is the last stitch. And pull that yarn in nice and tight once we crochet in it. And then we single crochet in the next stitch of the belly. Pause to see how it looks. Are they facing forward? And it seems so. They are both facing forward. So that's good. <laughs> so now we can continue. So we already made one single crochet. We have six all together. So that's one, two, three, four five, six. So now we can connect the last leg, the second hind leg, and in order for this one to point forward as well, or forward slightly outward maybe, like the other one, we again start crocheting on the inside of the leg. Just this time I'm going a little bit more forward because my last stitch is what was my first stitch on the other side, if that may make sense. So, um, yeah, I think I'm starting here inside, like more toward the front. And so we single crochet eight, one in each stitch of the hind leg. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Just pulling that yarn and tight after working in the slip stitch. Now we have two more to go. Seven and eight. Hmm, so far so good. We have one more single crochet to go. Let's see then how the leg looks fully attached. 
One single crochet, one last single crochet in the belly. And that's the round done. And let's see, yeah, that looks pretty much like the other hind leg pointing forward slightly outward. So that's it. <laughs> that's the round done. And in the next round, we will decrease quite a bit. Now we start the next round with a decrease. So the, the invisible decrease that we've done before in the front loops. Then we single crochet in the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five and six. Then we have another invisible decrease. So crochet the next two front loops together. Now we single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And then we have our next decrease. So the decreases are always with the last stitch of the belly and the first stitch of the leg together, or the last stitch of the leg and the first stitch of the belly. So now we have again four single crochet. One, two, three, and four, and then we have two decreases in a row. So here in the front we decrease twice in a row. It's one, and two, then we have four single crochet, one, two, three, let's do this again, didn't catch one of these, three and four. Then we have a decrease again. And four single crochet, one, two, and four and a decrease next we have six single crochet
four and this is five and six and then we have one more decrease to go so one more then the round is complete one decrease and that's the round done so now we're down to a round of 36 stitches and in the next three rounds round four to six we simply single crochet in all 36 stitches if you have big gaps here in between the belly and the legs you can use e these yarn ends to close them just with one or two stitches and then you can either weave them in or just leave them and use them as filling which is what I will do maybe I even leave them these openings because my yarn tur turned out quite chunky because I'm using these three strands and so I don't think they will be noticeable especially since the dog stands like this so I'm just leaving it and so you can pause the video here and hit play once you crocheted rounds four to six with just one single crochet in each stitch so my three rounds of 36 single crochet round four to six are now complete and this is how it looks and now in round seven we will crochet a little opening for the neck so that's where we will later crochet the neck out of and we start with a 14 single crochet one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And so now we are going to crochet the opening. And so we will chain four and skip eight stitches. And now let's count to four so that's the one two three fourth stitch here and for me that's the well in between the fourth and fifth stitch that's the center front of the dog and so this is perfect because we want the, the opening for the neck to be in the center front of course and so for you if you had if you have your end of the round quite close to the center back then this will work out for you as well but maybe for you it looks a bit different and if that's the case you can undo one stitch or do one extra stitch the the important thing is that you skip now the eight stitches that are most aligned with the center front so that's just something to bear in mind and now we chain four one two three and four and we skip these eight stitches one two three four five six seven eight and then in the ninth stitch we single crochet and now we have 14 single crochet on this side as well if you did everything the same way I did if you added an extra stitch or um, or deducted one then you will now have of course a different um, amount of stitches left so 
I have 14 stitches and regardless of the number we just single crochet one in each and I just let you get on with it and you can pause the video and hit play once you're done with the round. So that's the round done and now the back has a stitch count of 32. These yarn ends I'll just hide inside the body from now on. And so now all that's left to do for the body is just closing the back and so we decrease quite a bit in the next round. So we start with one single crochet. By the way that that's if you have 14 have made 14 single crochet on each side the way I did. Um, ideally we want the decrease to be with the last single crochet and the first chain as well as the last chain and the first single crochet so um, you may want to adjust you know when you decrease and when you don't just to um, have it this way if not it doesn't really matter it's just um, the, the ideal way maybe to make it the most symmetrical but it's it's not that important just thought I'd mention it. So we have one single crochet and then we decrease. Then we single crochet two, one and two and decrease again. We repeat this seven times. Two single crochet. and a decrease and two single crochet and our next decrease looks a little different so the first one is quite easy so we go through the front loop of this last single crochet stitch here and then we go through the back loop of the first chain. So that should be quite easy to do. And then we crochet these two together. There we go. Then we single crochet in the next two chains, just in, in the back loops, the front loops we need for the neck later. So they will be used for that. Now we have another decrease. This one is a little trickier, um, but nothing that can't be done. So here we go again in the back loop of the chain. And then we need to somehow get in the front loop of the first single crochet stitch here. And so we just need to pull our hook down a bit. Or we can again use, take advantage of the hook shape and get under the front loop from the front like this. And again, turn our hook similarly to what we did with the paws. And this way you should get under there. Then we make this decrease. And then we have two single crochet again. Decrease. Two single crochet. Decrease. two single crochet, one last decrease and one single crochet. So now our round has 24 stitches.
and in the next round we continue decreasing so this time we just start with a decrease and then we single crochet one and we repeat this eight times so we make a decrease and one single crochet that's the second time so you can repeat it six more times and you're on time pause the video and hit play once this round is done so now our round has 16 stitches and this is a good time to add some fiber fill of course we can add more through the opening for the neck but uh, already add some because now it's a bit easier to get it in the back and then later I'll add more through this front opening I'll add some already from this side and I think that's that's enough for now you can add them rest later through the neck and so we only have one round to go and so we decrease eight times in a row so that's one Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, and That's eight. Okay, so now we can fasten off. We leave a longish end to close the round properly. So we just pull that through, and now we need our yarn needle again. So I just twist this so that I can thread it on my yarn needle all three strands and so now we go through the front loops of each stitch the front loop of each stitch so that's one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, and so we just push this fiber fill all the way to the back before we completely close the back. Let me already get some more. Because once we get this yarn end through the body, it may be difficult to add fiber fill later. So I just want the back of the body nicely filled. And so now we can pull these yarn ends tight and be careful not to break the yarn. So 
gen as gently as possible. I know it doesn't look gentle, but I'm trying to be <laughs> quite gentle. And I think that's actually enough. So now, well, a little bit more. Thankfully, thankfully we have the cotton base, so that's very durable. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Okay, so now we go through the center of the last round and stitch through somewhere on the belly. And pull this just so that the back turns nice and flat. And then all we do for now is just weave in this yarn end. One. Two. Three. four and five you could also use this yarn and to close these gaps here if they bother you <laughs> i've just woven it in this way so that's that's enough i think and cut it short and so that's the body done so now we can go ahead and crochet the neck and so for the neck, we just take our three yarn strands, or if you're only using one, just the one, and we join it now in this opening for the neck. And so I go here through the first chain. That's where I'll join the yarn. So I'll just pick up these three strands and pull it through. And now we just go ahead and crochet one in each of these eight stitches that we now have here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now we will single crochet in the other side of the four chains here. So this here is the first one. That's one. This here is the next. Two and three. And the last one is here where we joined the yarn. So that's where the fourth one goes. And so now the first round for the neck is done and we have 12 single crochet. So now we just go ahead and crochet two more rounds of these 12 single crochet. So you can pause the video here and hit play once you've done that. My three rounds of 12 single crochet for the neck are done now. That's three rounds, rounds all together, including the one we did together, the first one. And so now we can fasten off here and we leave a long yarn end for sewing, let's say 30 centimeters, like 12 inches. And pull this through. And so 
Oh, I could have made a slip stitch here, but forgot. <laughs> Sorry. You go ahead if you haven't fastened off yet. It, it works out anyway. It works out nicely anyway. So this other yarn and can just go in the body and I'm already, already at some more fiber fill. So here you can just use the back of your hook to get that in there. Just get everything ready for sewing the head on, which we will crochet next. So for the head we take again our three yarn strands or just the one cotton one and we begin again with a magic ring. So here we don't need any long yarn and to start with just use your preferred magic ring method and then we begin with six single crochet in the magic ring. So just six single crochet in there. That's three, four. Five and six, and then we close the magic ring. I don't close it too tightly just yet. And now in round two, we start with an increase in the first stitch here. So two single crochet in there. And then we single crochet one in the next stitch and two single crochet in the next. So increase in the next stitch. We repeat this three times all together and then one single crochet in the next. And then once more, increase. And one single crochet. So now we have a stitch count of nine. And I go ahead and close the magic ring properly now. And put a stitch marker in the last stitch. In round three, we single crochet in all nine stitches. four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And so now in round four, we continue increasing. And so we begin with four single crochet. One. Two. three and four and then we increase four times in a row so two single crochet in the next stitch that's one increase two 
three single crochet in the next that's two increases two single crochet in the next that's three increases two single crochet in the next and that's the fourth increase so now we have one stitch to go and in that one we just make one single crochet so now we have a stitch count of 13 and in the next round we continue increasing and so we single crochet three That's the third one and now we increase in the next stitch so two single crochet in here now we single crochet in the next one and increase in the next and so we repeat this alternating one single crochet and one increase until we have five increases so this was the third one right so one single crochet one increase one single crochet one increase and then we have one stitch remaining and then that one we just make one single crochet and so now we have a stitch count of 18 so now that we have 18 stitches we just single crochet in all these 18 stitches for three rounds so round six to eight we simply single crochet one in each stitch and so I let you go on with that. You can pause the video here and hit play once you've crocheted round six to eight. So my three rounds of 18 single crochet are done now. So I'm using five millimeter safety eyes. I just tried to insert them in between round four and five and while it looked cute it didn't really look like a golden retriever so I'm trying now to place them in between round five and six and see how that looks. So just try to open the space up a bit carefully with my closed scissors. I've just done this in another spot and it doesn't matter even if you change your mind stitches just go back to where they were if you're careful so that's one side now this marks the top so maybe the other side would go here let's see <laughs> So now if you like you can add some eyelids and I'm just using the other end of the rainbow yarn that I'm using. Um, so I'm using this end that was so nicely marked <laughs> for us and that's what I'm using to crochet and now I just use the other end on the outside. Um, I love that about this yarn because sometimes I suddenly decide that I need a piece of yarn of the skein that I'm already using and then I can't find the second end and with this one it's really easy. So I just cut two maybe like 30 centimeter 12 inch pieces to embroider the, the eyelids because they have such cute eyes. I think 
it might be important to highlight that. And so um, that's optional though. You can skip this part if you prefer. And so let's see. I think I make the eyelids in three stitches because I want this cute look. Like uh, my friend's dogs have this look <laughs> when they want when you eat something and they they want you to give them some of it. <laughs> it's just adorable. So it's kind of a little bit like a triangle. So I just threaded one of these yarn pieces on my yarn needle, the regular yarn needle, I think will be fine for this. And now I'm stitching through from the inside of the head and like the lower outer corner of one of the eyes. So that's where I start. And I just leave a long enough yarn end here so that we can tie the ends together. And then I stitch through on the inside. So here I stitch through the fibers a bit, that's fine. But if you crochet it as tightly as I did, then you can even stitch through in between stitches, although I usually don't recommend it, but... Um, I think it won't move much, so in my case it's fine. If not, you can try to stitch through in between fibers so that you have more control over where the stitch goes. So that's the lower part. Now I'm doing this side, so now I'm stitching through above the eye. And then through to the inside, same spot where it just stitched through already. So, now I'm going through here again on the now I'm stitching through on the outs, um, outside of the eye again, in the lower corner. But I want this stitch to be above um, my needle. So I want the next stitch to cover this, the end of this stitch, if that makes sense. So that's. I'm stitching through underneath the existing stitch and now I'm doing this upper stitch here and I stitch through even further than where I stitched through before here because I want this st stitch I'm making now to cover this one as well. So stitch through here. Now let's see, maybe I will repeat this stitch. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Okay, good. I'll just see, I'll try and see how it looks if I make this one bolder. So... One more to make it a bit bolder. I just stitched through the same spot, same stitch. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. That's kind of what I meant. I mean, Yeah, you can make it even bolder if you want. I think I stick with that. <laughs> so now we can 
tie these two yarn ends together trying to ignore all the other yarn ends <laughs> then we can secure this safety eye and then we repeat all of this on the other side so then we can cut it short or leave it long to use it as stuffing I cut it off but you I probably use it as stuffing anyway <laughs> just put it to the side for now and just secure the safety eye and carefully because we don't want the yarn stitches we just made to, to get trapped underneath the safety eye so this lower stitch I made needs to be brought forward a little bit okay yeah so now it's gone more inside so it's good I think that I didn't add more stitches so that's one eye done and now you can go ahead and repeat this on the other side and next we embroider the mouth the nose and mouth and we also make an optional tongue so now the other eye is done and so we can move on to the tongue experiment I'm just making this up as I go so I hope it works out if you don't have pink embroidery floss and such a tiny hook don't worry if you have any pink yarn um, the lighter the better I would say and the same hook just use that and just make fewer stitches because all I'm doing is a couple of stitches um, I'm just using yeah, I'm leaving a slightly longer yarn end for sewing it obviously doesn't need to be very long for such a small thing and so I just make a loop one two three and that's the width of the tongue if you have thicker yarn and the larger hook then maybe you want to make the length of the tongue so I'll show you what I mean now I just single crochet in these two chains one and two so it could also just be such a you know some of them they just had most of them they just had a small part of their tongue hanging out <laughs> I think I'll just leave it at that I think that looks cuter so I fasten off here but you can make the tongue of course longer if you like by adding more rows or like I said if your yarn is thicker and so your tongue doesn't turn out so tiny you could use you know these two stitches could be the length and then this could be the base of the tongue so you could sew it and on this way so tiny little tongue here <laughs> I just put it aside because I think it's best to <laughs> embroider the nose first then the lower part of the mouth then the tongue and then the upper part of the mouth to kind of cover the tongue <laughs> I mean first you'll see what I mean <laughs> sorry <laughs> this will all make sense in a bit so for this embroidery part I'll be using the large eyed sewing needle just needs to be large enough for the embroidery floss and then it should be pointy and so what we do now we just embroider the cute big nose and so that's kind of like a rounded 
well it's not even well it's not really a triangle but I'm kind of aiming for a rounded triangle or like a I can't think of the English word for that shape that still looks like a triangle but it has four corners I think um yeah I hope you know what I mean like a funnel I'm not sure so for me this magic ring center is not really in the center so I'm just ignoring this and I just find the center of the nose which should be somewhere near the center of the magic ring and we do this with back stitches so I'll just stitch through aligning with one of the eyes so let's see a little bit higher so you can see my needle now aligns with the the left eye from my perspective left eye so that's where I stitch through and then now I just pull enough yarn out maybe like 40 centimeters 16 inches so that I have enough to work with and then I stitch through the same spot the lower spot here again but this time I align with the, the right eye from my perspective and I try to make the stitch the same length as the one on the other side we'll see if that works so now the needle is aligning with that side And now we have our first visible stitch here. Now I'm going through the same stitch again that we started with. And here at some point it's still quite easy but at some point the, the, the small pliers may come in handy. So then we stitch through this side just to make this top stitch and back down here. We always now we just always stitch down here where we started down to this lower corner and this We'll make it wider, I think, so that it won't look exactly like a triangle, which is a good thing. So I'm just pulling that through. And so that's kind of the shape. So now we just continue filling this triangle, I think. So this can go out of the way for now, this thread. And now I'm kind of on the outside, but I need to be on the inside to fill this. Okay. So now I just make as many stitches always leading here to this center point in the bottom and because I had to put moisturizer on my hands I really need those pliers now so just makes life a bit easier <laughs> so now I just make many of these stitches until the nose is filled so I'm going to speed up this part for you
Oh, by the way, we don't need the stitch marker for now. <laughs> so that looks okay to me so far. So with the next stitch, I'll continue straight to the mouth. And this one here, I just keep it aside. Um, I'm just ignoring this for now. So let's see. Now, I stitch one more time here in the center bottom, into the center bottom part, a little bit lower where the mouth is going to be. So here on the lower side. Okay. And now first, I start with the lower part of the mouth because then I want to sew on the tongue and then we finish off with the upper part. So I do this with a V stitch on each side. So all together it will be like a W but a very flat one. So I just stitch through here. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this already when doing the nose. It's always good to stitch through the fibers, then you have more control over where exactly the stitch goes. So, like not in between stitches, but through the fibers. So I'm making one stitch like this. Maybe that could have gone a bit further up. You know, you can still make adjustments like this. And then I go through here, like through the same stitch again that I started with for the mouth. Or at least I try for it to be the same spot. It's a bit trickier this time. Okay, so that's one side of the W. It's like a very shallow V. And now we go on the other side. Try to repeat this there. So Just stitch through here. Let's see, that might be too close to the nose. So yeah, just trying to make it similar. As symmetrical as possible. <laughs> so how's that? Let's see how that looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's not too bad. <laughs> so now I go through here and through to this center part of the W. Now let's see how it looks. Not perfect obviously but also not bad. <laughs> I'm happy with that. So yeah, actually, actually, let's let's do something. So now, I just go underneath each stitch once to kind of smooth out this W into a more curvy organic line. So I just went through underneath each stitch, and then I stitch all the way to the other side of the mouth. Okay. 
So now it looks bolder, but also maybe more smooth. <laughs> so what I did is I just go under this stitch, just under this black embroidery floss, not through the yarn, yellow yarn. I do the same with this second stitch and that's it. So now Before I do anything else, I sew on the tongue. <laughs> so I'm going to de-thread this. And now let me tidy this up. <laughs> so with the tongue, like this is the base that I'm going to sew on. So I need this yarn and to also be on that side. So I'm threading this one first. And just stitching through so that now both yarn ends are together. So I want this tongue, maybe from underneath it's easier to show, to go above this lower part of the mouth and then we'll embroider the mouth again on top like the upper part so i'll just stitch through first i just want to kind of see where it's going to go so right above the um, mouth by the way this is already a cute mouth so if you Want to leave it that way just make one stitch possibly with this piece of yarn down here to the mouth and then stitch this and through as well to the inside of the head tie them together and then you have a cute mouth so that's it if you don't want to add a tongue and so Then I just go through the other corner of the tongue. This is just meant to kind of pin it in place. And then somewhere here, I just stitch through to the inside so that one of the yarn ends is inside the head oh <laughs> so be careful you'll need these <laughs> we keep them more secure than I do and so that's one side already in. Okay, and now I'm using this yarn and to properly sew the tongue on. <laughs> And so I just try to hold it down and just, just will only take a few stitches. So I just go through the fibers as close to the mouth as possible. And then I go through the tongue. And then I go through the fibers of the, above the head, above the mouth. And again through the tongue, and once more through the head, and once more through the tongue, and 
to the inside of the head. <laughs> okay, it's the tongue sewn on. It looks funny now, but we will fix that in just a bit. But first, we can secure these yarn ends by just tying them together as best as we can inside the head. And then we can just use these ends as filling. Okay, so now the, the upper part of the mouth. So now I thread, I'm threading this yarn and that I used previously again. And I'm stitching now through here at the center of this very shallow W and just a tiny stitch so that I come out just above the tongue. Just above. And now I kind of just cover this base of the tongue with by by making another stitch in this lower w edge i mean it doesn't look edgy anymore because we smoothed it out but that's what i'm aiming where i'm aiming at and i stitch through to the other lower lowest point of the W, so I'll turn it around in a bit to show you. So I'm here and I stitch through the two low W points <laughs> that are very close to the each side to each side of the tongue. Okay. Let's see. All right. <laughs> and now I'm stitching through the center point of the uh, above the tongue, right through the inside of the head. And again, we don't want to mess with any of these yarns that we are crocheting with. So, oops. <laughs> there we go. Now I'll just finish everything with this other yarn end, so I leave it long enough to do that. Like at least twelve centimeters, four inches. And so first I'm filling this gap here. There's a tiny yellow spot showing still, and it's it's really difficult to stitch through the nose at this point, so I'm just stitching through the surface <laughs> through this black embroidery floss fibers just to cover this really because I know that later it will bother me so I'll just make a little stitch to hide that yellow spot and I want to come out again at the bottom lower corner of the nose 
Okay, pull it through. All right, much better. <laughs> now I just make a tiny straight stitch straight down to this top part of the mouth. And I'm stitching again through this, like what I've already done, to this lowest W point on the left side. And now I'm just smoothing out this upper part of the mouth. So what we've done before, I'm just doing the same. I just go under the stitch and kind of wrap this embroidery floss around it. And I think I go under it twice this time because it seems a bit longer this stitch. So now I'm wrapped around it. I wrapped around it twice. And now I go under this stitch on the other side. Once. And twice. And then we're all done and I just stitch through to the inside of the head. There we go. Okay, so That's the mouth done. I think it would have been cute without tongue as well. So it's just a little experiment to switch things up. <laughs> so now if at all possible you can tie these black yarn, um, embroidery floss ends together and then we can fill the head and finish crocheting it. Just make it double knot. I just push the knot down as deep as possible. But this is all very... I mean, I don't think anything's going to happen with these stitches. They're very tight. And now I just try to push in these ends as far as possible to make sure everything is nicely filled. And then we fill the rest with fiber fill. Whew. So I hope this wasn't too complicated, this bit. So, just make sure everything's nicely filled, especially around the and in between the safety eyes. And we can still add more fiber fill after the next round. So I leave it at that. Put in my stitch marker. And now we just want to close the back of the head and so we start decreasing so in the next round we single crochet in the next stitch and then we decrease so just the regular decrease in the front loops and we repeat this six times all together five more times one single crochet and one decrease alternating and as I'm doing this I'm trying to push the fiber fill in so that it didn't get worked into my stitches 
So one single crochet and one decrease. That was the third repetition, so three more times. One single crochet, one decrease, one single crochet, one decrease, and one single crochet. and one decrease. <laughs> so now I'm just adding more fiber fill. Pull this out a bit because we only have one more round to go. We have 12 stitches now. So make sure the head is nicely filled on all sides. I think this is enough. So now all we do is decrease six times in a row and so here goes the first decrease the second one The third one, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So just leave the yarn end not really long because we will use the yarn end that we left once we did the neck, when we did the neck, to sew on the head. So this just needs to be long enough to close this round and to weave in the end. So now we need our yarn needle. And we go through the front loops of all six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And pull this tight. And then we go in through the center of the last round, somewhere on the bottom side of the head, ideally somewhere here where the neck will go, just to weave in this yarn and we pull nice and tight so that the back of the head turns out nice and flat. And then we just weave in this yarn end with a few stitches. I don't put much effort into the weaving in, especially with this project, because I feel like the yarn really sticks because I'm using this The After Wild print more hair blend, and that's really great because I feel like it's not gonna undo itself, like it's, it's really secure. And I'm not washing my amigurumi because. I just keep them safe from dust and everything. So if yours are meant to be played with and you may want to wash them, then you may need to 
weave in the yarn ends better than I do. So there we go. Now we can just cut this short. Give the head a little squeeze and <laughs> so now the head needs ears of course so that's what we'll crochet next. So now we crochet the ears and again I take all my yarns to crochet together and I'm leaving a long yarn end for sewing right in the beginning and then just make a loop and chain three one two three and now we single crochet in the second chain from the hook And in the next chain, let's row one done, then chain one and turn, single crochet one in each stitch, one and two. Let's row two done, then chain one, turn, and skip the next stitch, just single crochet in the next. And that's row three done. So chain one, turn. Now we just single crochet one in the one remaining stitch. And now we single crochet all around the ear. So we single crochet one in each side, um, in the side, in both sides of the row. So. On this side we make four single crochet, then two single crochet here on the base in the other side of the chains, then again four single crochet up the other side in the side in the other side of the roads. So that makes ten stitches. And the first one goes actually in the same stitch where we already just single crocheted in just to make it more easy. That also helps the ear to not become too broad I think in the end so that's one then one in the side of the next row doesn't mat matter exactly where I just find a loop somewhere here on the side so that's two one in the side of the next row that's three one in the side of the next row which is here in the corner and that's four now one either in the same stitch or if you can find the other side of the base chain one in there one single crochet in the, the other side of the the other base chain then we can make one more stitch just in the same spot that counts as the first single as the single crochet in the other side of the first row single crochet in the side of row 2 and then one single crochet in the side of row 3 And one single crochet in the side of row four. And that's it. That's our 10 single crochet all around done. Now we just leave a long enough yarn end to make an invisible finish and weave in the yarn end. So we pull this, this through. Now we need our yarn needle. And now to finish this off, we go in the first stitch or the, this one stitch, one single crochet that we made in row four, just under both loops. Pull this as tightly as needed. Then we go through in between the front and back loop of the last single crochet that we just made. Go through there and now we kind of created an extra stitch that 
makes it look smooth and you don't really see where the end of the round is. So now here on the inside of the ear we can weave in this yarn end and I just wanted to like this is on one corner of the base of the ear I just wanted to get out somewhere here so I'll just go across here to the other corner and that's the ear done so you can go back um, and you can find the timestamp in the description box below if you don't remember the steps so you can go ahead and crochet the other ear and then we can go ahead and crochet the tail. So I have the body here because I'm not yet sure how long I'm going to make the tail. I'll just start with a long-ish yarn end to sew it on later on. And just keep it here so I can check. So let's start with seven chains and see how it goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we need to keep in mind this becomes a little shorter, but also we need to keep in mind that we will attach some of these Diablo Wild Print yarn um, pieces to make the tail nice and fluffy and that again makes it longer so I think I'll be adding two more so nine chains now they will shrink a bit when we crochet in them but again they will become longer when we add the fibers okay I'm doing two more and one of them is the turning chain. So 10, 11, let's see how that goes. And so we single crochet in the next, in the second chain, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, let's see. This would be the tail base. And obviously we'll make it fluffy later on um, so I think that's long enough because it will get longer with the fluff so you can of course make it longer or shorter just keep in mind that we'll add some extra fluff so it may appear a little longer than it is now. I think that's enough so I'll just fasten off here and we don't need a very long yarn and obviously to attach this little tail so this should be enough and so now we can go ahead and assemble everything. So I start with attaching the ears to the head so that we can then attach the head to the neck. And so you can just play around with it. You can use pins to pin them in place and just look at the head from all angles to see if it looks the way you want it to look. I'll just show you what I do with the one ear and then you can 
Wikipedia the year on our own. Just looking at my golden retriever pictures. So, mm, enough space between the ears and eyes, but also we want enough space in the back. Mm. Somewhere here. Something like this. Same, almost the same level as the eyes. I well, above the eyes. Slightly above the eyes. So, now, I forgot my pins as usual, so I'm just using this needle <laughs> to pin them, to pin the ear on. And we just thread this long yarn end. You can start from either side, it doesn't matter. Just cutting this off so that I can thread it more easily. And now very simple. So as usual now I just try to find a loop on the head to sew through maybe even closer to the ear as close to the ear as possible pull that through and then from the top to bottom stitch through the ear or if yours is as chunky as mine maybe you just want to grab a little loop Normally I go through the whole ear, but with this the chunkiness of these yarns combined, I think I'll change my strategy. So I just pick little loops to make little stitches. Then again a little loop on the head. And a little loop on the ear. There we go. Pull that nice and tight. <laughs> and we're almost done already little loop on the head and one last little loop on the ear like somewhere here in the corner and just just make sure that the ear is kind of being flat I may I may use the other yarn and to make it lay flat or even this one. I'll just go through. So if you're using all these yarns, all the yarns that I'm using, then maybe your ear may be like flying in the air. <laughs> Not laying flat. So you can just stitch through on the inside of the ear and then find wherever that stitch is on the head like wherever this part of the ear should be attached to and that's where you stitch through and then I go straight to, to the bottom side of the head to weave in the yarn end so this way the ear lays flat and now I just weave in this yarn end.
and that's it. Then we also weave in the other yarn end. I wonder if the yarn, uh, the yarn, if the ear is pointing too far um, backward, which then is not a problem now. But maybe it looks funny once I've sewn on the other ear. And so I'm doing the same thing now with this yarn end. Just stitch through to almost the tip of the ear on the inside of the ear and now I'm using this yarn end to kind of bring the ear forward so that it doesn't look too strange on the back of the head and then let's just see where I stitch through maybe here Yeah, that seems to do the job. Let's see how it looks in the end. And it doesn't have to be so tight so that the ear isn't super close to the head. That's okay, I think. So now we just Weave this yarn end in and then you can go ahead and repeat all of these steps to sew on the other ear. So that's the head complete. And so now we can go ahead and sew it on the body. And so just make sure that it points forward and that the back of the head is aligned with the neck so it doesn't usually stick out like this if you know what I mean so just sew it on this way and so we have our long yarn and now I'm using all of these threads to sew it on just to make it look um you know just just for this for the seam to blend in <laughs> and so I start with one stitch here through the first stitch of the round just to even out this I could have made a slip stitch there but I forgot <laughs> so now let's see you can of course pin the head in place first I'll just go around in direction of the round as if I would crochet it and so now same with the ears just that it's the whole round I just find a small loop on the head as close to this next stitch as possible and just pull the yarn end through and now I'm going through the next stitch from the outside inward There we go. And then I find a loop on the head again, close to this next stitch. So I'm going for this one. Just going through here. Pulling that through. And through the next stitch from the outside in and sometimes I just double check to make sure that it's still not crooked and in the facing forward and everything so now again through the head find a loop close to this next stitch here
and this way we just work all around. I'll let you get on with it because this is probably not too interesting. We just always go through one loop on the head and then through the next stitch from the outside inward until we've sewn all around the head. So now I'm at the last stitch of the round. So I just go in there and stitch through somewhere where I can weave in the yarn end anywhere really. And that's the head attached. Now we just weave in this yarn end. I just let you get on with that and then we can go ahead and attach the tail. So now we just go ahead and attach the tail. I'll use, I'll start with the yarn and that um, we finished with the, the working end. So I'll just attach it somewhere here. So if you count back, if you count the rounds backward, one, two, three, four, like in between round four and five, centered in the back, of course. So I'll just do the same thing that I did with the ears. Just find a loop on the body stitch through there and then stitch through the base of the tail just catching one loop should be enough or stitching through the whole tail if you don't use all these three threads then again through the body Then again through the tail, and with the tail I'm, I actually wanted to kind of, you know, probably be like this. I think that will look much cuter if it's like somehow in the air. And so that's already, we're already done with this yarn, and so we just stitched through somewhere close to the tail and weave in this yarn end oh so i might as well show you now what i do with the other yarn end so now we thread this yarn end on our needle And stitch through just stitching through to the belly because that's where I'll weave in these yarn ends. So I'll leave you to, to it and then all that's left to do well, I'm saying all that's left to do, but that's quite quite a lot, is attaching the fluffy parts. And so I look forward to doing that with you. You can pause the video here and hit play once you're ready for that. So our little dog is almost done. Well, if you made a Labrador, then you're little Labrador is complete. Congratulations. Thank you for crushing along with me. And if you're making a golden retriever, then you can stick around because now we attach these yarn pieces. I just cut a few of them here. I don't, don't know how many we'll need. Um, I just want to show you what we're doing with them and then I kind of let you get on with it because that would take a long time if I'd film myself attaching them all. <laughs> so I'll just take two of these yarn pieces. Let's start with the tail because the tail is 
fluffy for sure. So I'm doing this with all the fluffy parts. So I go through a stitch on the tail and then I pull these yarn ends through at the center so that I have a loop here and then pull the ends through this loop and then pull the ends tight and that's done. So I do that with the whole tail. So I'm going all around and I'm going from the top down along the side of the tail each into each stitch of the tail then find the center of two of the yarn threads of the Diablo wild print pull it through so that I have a loop and then pull the yarn ends through the loop and pull them tight. So I'm doing this all around and so you can pause the video here and hit play once you've attached yarn pieces all around the tail. So now I've at attached these yarn pieces all around the tail. <laughs> I'm loving this effect. Of course I'm going to trim it. <laughs> it's not gonna stay this long but I'm already loving it. Just now because the top looks a bit funny, I'll attach um, some fibers to the top as well. Pieces of yarn, I just find these loops, you know, that are like horizontal. If you look at the tail from this angle and I just, oops, find these loops and attach to pieces of yarn. Now the sun comes out, sorry about that. I need to close the curtain. Just pull it through the same way we already did and this way I just work my way up. So now I'm going here and then here like zigzagging my way up all the way to the base of the tail. We will attach some more fur to all the fluffy parts. So for example, here in the front, they're very fluffy. So I just always go down like, um, and just start here. So we work ourselves from the bottom up but the hook goes down from the top down and it's probably easiest to have it upside down like this and then also now I figured out that I just when I cut the yarn pieces I put them in pairs already so that makes it a bit easier <laughs> because they stick together and so I just go through the stitches like this to attach these yarn pieces and I'll just really attach them anywhere where the golden retriever is fluffiest. So that's why I did I incorporated this yarn in the whole amigurumi because I didn't want the parts that aren't as uh, fluffy or wh where the fur is shorter. I didn't want those to look too different and so I hope that it will blend in nicely this way. So I'll just go ahead with this next part and I'll let you do the same. I'm sure you have the, you've got the hang of it now. So just attach 
those fibers to each row, each round, and each stitch anywhere where we want it to be fluffy with long fur. So now I added fur to the front of the body and one side. I didn't do the other side yet so that I can show you what I did. I added two strings of this yarn to each row, each stitch in each row here in the front. I think it's almost too much so maybe you don't want to do as much. Your decision. Of course we will trim all of this to the right length later but still it looks like a lot. It may be too much. We'll see. And so I decided here on the side I, I just added two of these pieces of yarn to every other stitch and then I had them overlap so I'll show you what I mean by that in just a bit. So let's do the other side together and so also with the tail I found that it looks funny. I'll probably edit it in a way so that I can show you before we attach the mohair blend yarn. I think I will just sew the tail together so that it becomes more round. I think that will have a nicer effect. So let me show you what I did. Just turn a little dog around. I prepared lots of these pairs of yarn. Just like I said, they are a bit difficult to detangle sometimes. And so let me just start here. So I just go under this stitch here. Well, maybe... Oh, actually I added them to the belly as well. Okay, so we do the belly as well. So I start here. That was a difficult one. So on the belly, I still attached yarn to each stitch. And what I mean by that is I'll attach it here. That's a really tricky spot. I pick there. So I'll attach two pieces of yarn here. There we go. And then I move on to the next stitch and, att and attach the next pair here, right next to it. So that's, I'll just do this for these two rounds of the belly and then I show you what I did on the side of the body. So now I've attached um, two rows of fur to the belly to each stitch and here is where I start attaching only to every other stitch. So I attached a piece of or a pair of yarn pieces here then I skip this stitch and the next one goes here. That's what I mean by every other stitch. So just attach a pair here. And then again, I skip the next stitch and the next pieces of yarn I attach here. So I know here I attach two next to each other, that uh, wasn't on purpose, but it's okay. So here I skip again the next one and the next one is this here on top of the leg.
Let's try this again. There we go. And then not the next one, but the next. Ooh. There we go. I'm not sure if I need to attach fur here because there's going to be the tail. So we'll see if I may get back to that part later. And now toward the front, I don't attach any yarn here. The next one goes here. So now moving up to the next row, because I attached yarn to this, stitch I now move to the stitches in between just so that the surface will be covered without adding too much volume that's why I'm only going in every other stitch so you may want to do this on the front as well if you haven't started yet um, I'll see how it goes. Maybe I keep it that way. If, if necessary, I'll remove some fluff later. So then I skip this one and the next one goes here. And so I skip this stitch and the next piece goes here. And then sometimes, depending on where we made increases and decreases, it might not work out perfectly. So if I skip this one and then attach the next one here, then it will be exactly on top of the previous one. But I want them to go in between, if you know what I mean. So now I attach another one here. So that's just the most important thing to look out for too attach them in the gaps so that everything will be covered and then I skip one and the next one goes here and that's perfect because there's a gap here and so I'll just move my way up this way all the way to the back and then I show you what I did on the neck and how far up the head I went but for now you can pause the video and hit play here should the next one go so I'm skipping two here so that the next one goes in between <laughs> but yeah I hope that makes sense so you can pause the video here and hit play once you oh sorry about that <laughs> once you attached fur to this side of the body and the back. So I attached fur to this side and I added some extra pieces to the back just to cover the top here and now I'll just attach some more here on the neck and to the face and then also the ears I think we'll see <laughs> because obviously this shouldn't be very long the fur on the ears we'll see how it goes so first um, I do the neck here so here again um, it doesn't need that much volume so I just go in every other stitch And... 
gap in here to fill this gap. Maybe one more in between. Mm, one here for sure. Oh. Trying not to get any fiber fill out. Okay, and now moving up the back of the head. Just so that there's not just a head sticking out of the furry body. Because we want to blend it, blend the head and the body together once we Give it a nice little haircut. So, oh. well, maybe one here. I'll add one more piece here and then I'll move on to the front of the head. Okay, that's the back of the head done, I think. So now we're moving on to the front. Now here, under the head, I'll just attach some more to make to help the head go smoothly blend smoothly into the body later on. Mm. One more here maybe. Yes, that should be enough. Now one more here. So it will be difficult to attach it this way, so I'll attach it sideways instead.
So this is how it looks from underneath. And so now I'll just attach some to the ears. I think I'll just try attaching it to the top of the ears so that I can leave them quite long because if we cut them too short then they're going to come loose. So I just go here through the top of the ear. Let's see if that works. Yes. Okay, let's hatch one there. And then one to the next stitch. So before I start with the haircut, I'm just going to sew this tail together and I'm using the Diablo Wild Print yarn um, and packing it double to make it stronger. And I just want to, I start on the, at the tip so that I end here and then I can hopefully um, weave in the yarn end. So I'll just try to sew both sides together. First I make I tie them together here. The good thing is they will just look like some piece of fur. This end. <laughs> just make a double knot here. And then I'll just go through each um Kind of trying to catch one loop on each side to kind of close it together into something that's more round. At the same time trying to squeeze it together a bit. Yeah, I think that's working. Yay. So just working my way all the way to the base of the tail. It works. <laughs> okay, I think that will look better in the end, hopefully. So, that's a really strong yarn, if you can even sew with it. That's really impressive. more stitches to go trying not to work these yarn pieces in there no oh. didn't catch a proper loop there here we go and one or two more stitches I think this is enough, so now I'll just make a knot and then I'll just cut off the yarn and it will just look like a part of the fur. <laughs> so that should be secure enough. And let's see. Yeah, I think that looks better now. Just need to organize or comb this <laughs> first. 
paper and then it will really look better. Okay, so moving on to this bit here, if that happened to you as well, you can, like me, sew it together. I'm going to use the Diablo Wild print again because it worked so beautifully for the tail. So this way. I imagine it won't show as much if I'm using this. Just closing this properly to make sure it doesn't open anymore. Starting with a double knot. And that's it already. That should be enough. So just making a knot again. One more and cutting this off. Okay, so now we can go ahead with the haircut. <laughs> okay, and just keep the hair of the ears up so that I don't accidentally cut that yet. <laughs> so let's see, let's start first with removing all of this excess here. <laughs> so Please don't throw this away. This makes excellent stuffing for your next amigurumi. <laughs> Definitely keep that. So, <laughs> I would say first maybe it's a good idea to kind of divide, like make a parting here on the back to decide which hair goes on which side. So for me the head is tilting toward the left so some of these maybe this one will go to the right. And sometimes when there's a gap you can also split the like each two pieces of yarn that you attach, they make four strands, so you can also split them in two and two, for example. Move one to one side and the other to the other side, and maybe that fills a gap somewhere. So Need to fix the tail again in a bit. <laughs> Just keep that out of the way for now. And let's see. So, here I'm just trying to remove bit by bit so that I don't cut off too much.
cooking now before I cut off too much somewhere. <laughs> so my golden retriever is done. If you're still around, if you crocheted and created with me all the way, then congratulations. This wasn't an easy project. Well done. And I hope you're happy with how your golden retriever turned out. Thank you so much to Hobby for sending me this yarn. I'm so happy with the, especially with the Diablo Wild print, but I can also highly recommend the rainbow yarn, both of them. They are perfect for amigurumi and I will definitely make more projects using the Diablo Wild print that's really great for any long-haired dogs or other animals that have long fur. So I'm really happy that I got to try it. And thank you so much to you all for watching, for crocheting along with me. If you enjoyed this project, please like this video for me. That would be so lovely. Comment below if you have any questions or um, any feedback. And I'd love to see your golden retriever or if you use this pattern to make a short hair version, a Labrador, um, or something like that, then I would love to see that as well, of course. So please, if you share a picture of your creation on Facebook or Instagram, tag me with at Stella's Yarn Universe so that I can give you a huge thumbs up. So thank you again so much and see you in the next video. Bye!